At what point were you, did you start producing for for other artists as well? Because you know you did the Eric B and Rakim. Yeah. Was that during the the main source stuff? Or? That was yeah. All of that was at the same time. The same time. Yeah, it was like okay. uh, uh, Eric B and Rakim, Cool G Rap, and Polo Wanted Dead or Alive. And main source were all being recorded at the same time, breaking albums. Right, and and I gotta say that uh, "Streets of New York" is one of my favorite man. Koji rap songs Thank you, man. of That's, all yeah. time. That was a great. You know, dope fiends, fiending for more yeah. fiend, like yeah, G rap <laughs> man. That was a and it was a great effort because. That's why they can never front on hip hop because the way that song came together, we had our man Anton Pushansky, the engineer. He was playing the keyboards on there. G rap came with the rhyme, and it was all these different backgrounds, and you know, to put this thing together. And I, I believe it'll go on in in the world to be like something that, you know, on represent hip hop very well. Or, right, and I guess you produced "Let the Rhythm Hit Him," but never really got the. The Let the work. rhythm hit him. Yeah, I, I did a lot of production on there. You know, at that time, man, I didn't know, you know, you, you ante up. You, that was kind of the nature of the, like, yo, this the young gun, like, this the secret weapon kind of dude. You know what I'm saying? Because it was, you hear stories of that in P.E. You know, yo, this, guy, this is the guy that really did the cuts and all of that, but they just kept everything under wraps. You know, when I did the source thing, everything, like, the covers was lifted up a little bit because it was mm -hmm. like, yo, here's this kid. This kid is... You know, and it was just the energy was just wild with me with that production stuff because it was so sought after. But it started with Rush, with RPM, like um, Francesca Spiro, God bless her. She had reached out when they, um, with Marley, when I was doing Intelligent Harlem. She was like, yo, you want to keep working? I was like, why not? Well, mm -hmm. let's keep going. So the main source album comes out. And uh, it does well, but it doesn't blow up huge yeah, initially. Yeah. The bootlegging era, right? The, the bootlegging era. Bootleg, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So you're still fucking with Nas. Absolutely. And and I remember I interviewed MC Search. I'm not sure if you saw the interview. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, big up Search. Now, nah, he yeah. yo, word. And, and he search. talked about how the, the Nas deal came together. I go to Stretch and I go to uh, Reef and I said, hey, I said, fellas, I said, look, your family. I'm not trying to fuck with y'all, but I, I saw the deal you offered them. It ain't, it ain't right. I said, this ain't 1988. You know, we can't offer the greatest MC of all time a deal like this. I don't want him to go anywhere. I just want you to make the deal better. So we talked for six, six hours back and forth. And they played hardball. And Reef came down and he's like, he's like, yeah, Craig said that's the deal. Take it or leave it. I was like, ping, <laughs> out, bye. Go across the street to Black Rock. I go see Faith Newman, who had worked on the third base stuff when she was at Def Jam. And all I said to Faith was, um, I signed Nas. And she said, I'll be right back. And she left the room, and I sat there for like two hours. She comes back, and her boss at the time is this guy, David Kahn. And she was like, you're not leaving the building until we have a deal for Nas. Based on what you heard from my search interview, was yes. that pretty accurate? Absolutely. How that deal came well, together? Well, see, actually with me, you know what I'm saying, because Nas, and this is one thing that I think Nas has with me and shit that I never really stepped up on the business in. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't like, yo, sign these papers and all of that. But I never looked at them like that. I looked at them like we side by side. We in this, you know what I'm saying, rocking. If you go get more bread, you know what I'm saying? However, mm -hmm. we're going, you know what I'm saying, we'll build up and shit. But search was more in that in that mind frame at that time where it was like, yo, we can make this bigger than what it is. And I can't front. Nas really needed that at that time. He needed for shit to be bigger. He needed money to come fast and all of that. So I understood that. And that's why I was like, yo, blessings. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with you. Whatever we got to do. As soon as we that click clacked, he was like right back. Like, yo, I... That's done. Let's get it in the lab. Right, because Nas was still on the Queensbridge project. Exactly. This time. That's what I'm saying. And I, you know, at them times, like, you know, you hear Queensbridge, you know, and you think, oh, fun place. Like, yeah. but then when he's doing this album and you're hearing, like, all the intricacies of what's really going on in there and shit, like, just, you know, we built, we built like still. So we, a lot of shit that we accept don't mean that it's, it's normal. You know what I'm saying? So Nas is, you know, Motherfuckers want peace, you know what I'm saying, in their life and to be able to create. So I understood that. He used to bounce out the flushing, you know what I'm saying? That's him, how him and Carmen got up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I interviewed yeah. Carmen, and yeah, she was yeah, saying yeah. how... I didn't how, see that one, though. God bless. That's my sister, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, she was saying even during the making of 
uh, Illmatic, you know, they were still, they were both in Queensbridge projects. I guess she was pregnant. Yeah. And, and they were going through like the street politics and, yes. and everything else oh. like that. When the, the two months that I lived there, well, that we lived there, um, four, peop four of his friends had gotten shot and one actually died. I believe he got shot in the leg and then it was like a shock thing. But I mean, just to have so many tragedies and such a small period of time, you know, that was overwhelming for me because I was pregnant. It was extremely overwhelming for him because he was working on his album and, you know, trying to transition into a totally different lifestyle. But at the same time, this was still relevant. The things that were going on in the projects, his mother still lived there, his brother still lived there, like we were living there, even though we were about to transition into another home in Long Island. He couldn't separate himself from you know, what, the lifestyles, you know, like, yeah, you can go home and drive to Long Island and get on the highway. But then this is what keeps you relevant. This is what you're talking about. This is what you're rapping about. This is what you're experiencing on a day to day basis, because this is the environment you choose to be in. And I couldn't understand it in the beginning. Like, well, why don't you just leave the projects and just never go back? And, you know, that's like saying to someone, why don't you just leave Jamaica, Queens and never go back? You know, you are where you're, you know, you live where you live. You you're brought up in these environments and you deal with it the best way you can and it either makes or breaks you. And in this case, I think it really just made him, especially when you look back at all the people who didn't make it. Everybody in QB knows, I say this all the time, I don't mess with QB politics like <laughs> at all. So that's the beginning of QB politics. And it was like, you know, so I knew the pressure. So, you know what I'm saying? He, it was with him and search. It was like every, yo, blessings, man. Like, yo, Make it, you know, because I was, you know, I'm in flush and I'm, yo, you know, that type. It was more urgent for him, so I, I understood the him and search thing.